had a historic 2023 campaign, becoming the Cowboys' leader in a single season, breaking the record for receptions in a single season, and also breaking the single season record in receiving yards. That also paved the way for Braden Cooks to have a lot more production. We saw a lot more from Jalen Tolbert and Jalen Brooks as well. That receiver room looking pretty nice heading into the offseason. But now we've got Patrick Nosey Walker to go ahead and break down the state of this current room. I mean, when you talk about what CeeDee Lamb did uh, last year, it was pretty special. I mean, but you also have that depth now. I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on the guys in that room? Well, first of all, it starts with CeeDee Lamb, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. CeeDee Lamb being now one of the best wide receivers to ever put on, not only the number 88, but to put on the Dallas Cowboys yeah. uniform. He's currently in contract talks with the Cowboys. Things are going well. Expectation is he'll be here for the long term. Question is, who will be his his compliment. Mm -hmm. Brandon Cooks came in via trade and got off to a slow start, but picked up on the back end of last season as he got more comfortable with Mike McCarthy's offense. Good things there, but he's going into a contract year. Cowboys are not lacking for talent behind Cooks and Lamb, but what they are lacking for is proven experience. Mm -hmm. Can Jalen Tolbert, former third round pick out of South Alabama, he made great strides under the tutelage of Lamb uh, and Brandon Cooks in year two. Can he continue that now that Michael Gallup is out of the building? Kevontae Turpin, we saw flashes there. Uh, former seventh round pick Jalen Brooks, he looks like he can step in and make an impact immediately. But again, you're going to have to probably look at the position in yeah. the draft because you're going to need someone who can definitely tandem in the event that Cooks is not on the field in 25. When you talk about proven uh, experience, you can't judge what you haven't seen, right? right. They have seen much of. Uh, when you talk about a guy like Jalen Tolver, where's your conf confidence level in what you have seen so far? Oh, it's it's much, much higher than it was <laughs> prior to the 2023 season. Mm -hmm. Spoken with Jalen Tolbert, a lot of colleagues have spoken with Jalen Tolbert coming off of that very rough uh, 2022 rookie year, and he said it himself. He was mentally overwhelmed, kind of a deer in the headlights as it comes to uh, acclimating to the NFL from a smaller program like South Alabama, but when you look at the strides that he took uh, in 2023, his confidence is back where it was at South Alabama. He's thinking less, he's playing more, and you can see it on the field. So I believe that he has a very real opportunity to step into that void that's being left by Michael Gallup. So is this a situation where you see the Cowboys possibly taking a receiver maybe day three or what's your thoughts on that? I do feel like that's a day three situation okay. for the Cowboys, Nicole. I think that anything prior to day three when you're talking about the second round, third round, first round, I think barring a C.D. Lamb type situation, which I really don't foresee it being the case this year, uh, then yeah, it's definitely going to be something fourth or later. That means the Cowboys are going to have to yeah. probably trade down and get their fourth round pick back to make it happen if they want to go that soon. Quite a few options in this draft, too, to possibly take a look at. We've got Kyle Yeomans to go ahead and break down that options. No, I really like what you said there, Patrick, because number one thing about this Dallas Cowboys team is when you're building your wide receiver core, you're building it around C.D. Lamb. You can't necessarily worry about the future of Brandon Cooks. So no more Michael Gallup. You don't know what Jalen Tolbert is going to be, though he did show growth in year number two with the Cowboys. I want to try and find a Michael Gallup replacement and a different element that this offense doesn't necessarily have. So that brings me to wide receiver number one. This is Xavier Worthy. What he brings to the table is nothing but pure burner speed. He broke the NFL combine record with a 4 2 one That's even quicker than Patrick, and that's, not, that's hard to do, getting faster than Patrick Walker over here. He had over 1,200 yards. He was a first-team all-conference selection. Here he is in the slot. He can play outside. He can play inside. He's not just bound to the slot. This is a play on a curl route. One of the things that Texas did was simplify his route tree. He didn't have the separation on these routes normally. This was actually good separation. Believe it or not, there's a defensive back back here somewhere. I just don't know where he's at. But he actually takes a couple extra steps here. Nine steps is what it took to get to that curl. But then once he has the ball in space, he's off to the races. He's going to basically beat anybody on the field in a foot race, which if you use him in a right selection, in a right way, you're going to have some success as well. Here's another way that Texas did it. He's actually up at the top of the screen here. Bubble screens, wide receiver screens, wide receiver sweeps, all of which are available because then it allows him to do this. Let's just play through this full speed. Just let it go. Look at this. This is not fast forward. That's fast worthy all the way to the end zone. Shook out a defender at the second level as well, and Wyoming could not catch up to the Longhorn. I like him as possibly a second round pick. If you're at 56, you take care of the offensive line 
early and you see him at 56 overall, which is a little bit of a slip. I think he'll go early on day two. He would be a phenomenal selection at the wide receiver spot. Here's another one that may be a little bit later in the weekend. This is your Michael Gallup replacement, ladies and gentlemen. Xavier Leggett, six foot one, 220, so very comparable to the size that Michael Gallup brought to the table. He le he was eighth in the FBS last year with 1,200 yards in this 2023 season. So if we go ahead and go to his stats, here's what he brings, a bigger frame to the table than a guy like Xavier Worthy. But what Leggett brings is a phenomenal catch radius, one of the best in college football. Here he is against Georgia, just some no-name team in the SEC. I don't know who they've, I mean, they've won a couple of games over the last couple of years. But South Carolina goes over the top of his defender, and Leggett comes down. He gets a foot down. It would have counted on Saturdays, not on Sundays. We'll work on it. We'll work on it, everybody. But the catch radius is certainly there. Only at six foot one, it's still something that he can add to his game with in NFL offseasons and NFL strength and conditioning training. Here he is in yards after the catch. That was one thing that Michael Gallup being a deep threat on the outside on the boundary was very good at. He could also get underneath, use some of the pieces moving around him, get open, and then get off to the races. That's exactly what Xavier Leggett does here. He takes this all the way to the house against Mississippi State. Again, SEC competition, something to be very excited about. Now, one last thing I mentioned on Xavier Worthy, how he can be used in sweeps. You can also use Xavier Leggett in the backfield as well. Spencer Rattler with the quick little handoff on the sweep. Here he goes. Now he's looking for space. Pause it right here. There's three defenders that are moving in his direction. It doesn't matter. Look at all this green space he just created for himself with a bit of a stutter step here, and then he's gone. He gets out to the outside of the numbers, and he's able to pick up the first down easy for South Carolina. Couple of options, two very different players in a deep wide receiver class. You can pick up some wide receivers in this draft class that will have early success in the NFL. I think Worthy and Leggett probably fit this Cowboys team and what they already employ with C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks, and Jalen Tolbert the best out of the re receivers that are in those middle rounds. Real fast, Patrick, I didn't know you had speed like that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, former award-winning sprinter here, Xavier Worthy. Uh, let's line up and let's see who's really got the juice. Okay. I would pay money I would pay to see that. To see that. Absolutely. Just to see I would absolutely how, how run much it. separation I would, he would build. <laughs> I would love to see it. You could probably fit a bus in there. It'd be fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to dispute that, but I am, <laughs> I am willing to test the theory. Fantastic options there by, yeah. by you, Kyle. Xavier Worthy, absolute burner. He can just yeah. absolutely destroy mm -hmm. the, the third level of any team's defense. Uh, and I'm also going to throw another name out there. Maybe an early mid-round or mid-day three pick. Malachi Corley mm -hmm. out of Western Kentucky. He's a guy that kind of jumps off the film at me. Um, he's a guy who's kind of a tweener between slot, outside receiver, under six feet, but he's coming in at around 215. And that's the kind of mass that helps him get yards after the carry. He's able to manipulate angles, but he can run right over some of these smaller linebackers. He can run right over some smaller safeties. Malachi Corley is a name to keep an eye on. Plus, elite athlete, convert from cornerback. So maybe, just maybe, if you have a knock on wood injury at cornerback, you got somebody who can come in, break glass in case of emergency. They yeah. called him the Yak King <laughs> yeah. at Western Kentucky. So what the Hilltoppers know it. He can get out there, and once he's in some space, just like Xavier Worthy, he can pick up some yards. So are there are any sleepers in this draft? I'm going to talk to KY on this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's a couple of them. How about Luke McCaffrey out of Rice? I, Christian McCaffrey's brother. So he's the last of the McCaffrey clan some to work through there. college. He yeah. has some pedigree, and he switched late to the position. He, he wasn't a wide receiver early in his career, works into the wide receiver position, put up a ton of numbers with the Owls, and, and really showed out in their first year in the American Athletic Conference. Higher level of competition than what they had in the past, and he took a step forward. I like him as a developmental prospect in a sleeper in the draft. And line. I will say this uh, really quickly, since he went ahead and mentioned <laughs> some team named Georgia. Oh. Uh, Lad McConkey Shade. is someone you would certainly want to keep an He's eye great. on as well. Lad McConkey, uh, he reminds me of Cole Beasley as far as being able to mm -hmm. manipulate with his footwork, probably arguably the best footwork of any wide receiver in this class. Uh, and when you get him out in space, he's more of a slot guy at the NFL level than an outside guy, but he's also the potential of being an elite, probably one of the best slot receivers in the NFL. I'll do you a favor. I'll do you a Please favor. Do. 
he's not a sleeper. He's a legitimate okay. prospect out of Georgia. To be Congratulations. fair, I, <laughs> you finally got an NFL project. To out be of fair, I just, I, the shot was thrown at the <laughs> University of Georgia, and I had to come to uh, to the dogs. It's aid. more that of a respect. Good. We love it. Anything. Love Absolutely. to see it. Love to see it. A lot of unknown, like I mentioned before, heading into this 2024 NFL draft, but a lot of excitement. Looking forward to what the Cowboys bring uh, this offseason. That's a wrap for today's episode. We'll see you next time. It's race. <laughs> <laughs>